Hello friends, welcome to BMH Learning. In this video, we are going to talk about Tetra ARMS PCR. Before we talk about Tetra ARMS PCR, first we need to understand what is ARMS PCR. ARMS PCR is a variant of PCR technology which is a simple and economical method used to genotype single nucleotide polymorphisms. So the method is able to detect mismatches at single base pair level. Why the study of SNPs is so important? The thing is that SNPs are the most abundant in the genome. And if there occurs even a single nucleotide change, it would greatly affect the traits or characters linked to it. Let's take the classical example of the human disease sickle cell anemia. It's caused by a genetic mutation in the codon for the sixth amino acid of the blood protein beta hemoglobin. The normal DNA sequence GAG codes for the amino acid glutamate. While the mutation changes the middle adenine to a thiamine leading to the sequence GTG and this is GUG in the mRNA. This altered sequence substitutes a valine into the final protein distorting its structure. So in healthy person we get the normal RBC and in case of sickle cell anemia patient the RBC shape is changed. Although to study these traits or other SNPs, various techniques are available, but they are more time consuming and expensive. So for this we have Tetra Arms PCR. This is one of the most economical and rapid technology. The Tetra Primers Amplification Refractory Mutation System PCR basically involves a single PCR step, which is then followed by gel electrophoresis. As the name suggests, it uses four primers in a single run of PCR, that is, two outer primers and two inner primers. Now these two set of primers serve different purposes. Outer set of primers, that is outer forward and outer reverse. This combination of primers generate a large fragment in all the genotypes. So this way it acts as an internal control of PCR, that is positive control. Inner set of primers, that is internal forward, outer reverse and outer forward, internal reverse primers give rise to allele specific amplified products or amplicons. These allele specific amplicons are of varying sizes and thus can be easily differentiated and discriminated on gel electrophoresis. Let's elaborate it more. We know there are two alleles or forms of a gene. Suppose there are two individuals individual X and individual Y. There is a single nucleotide change in the gene sequence of these two individuals which would ultimately lead to two different products. Let's say in case of individual X, the base A is present which gets mutated to G in individual Y. To make it more simple and easy to understand, we are talking about only one strand. So our aim is to confirm the status of the allelic form using tetra arms PCR. So first of all, the outer markers will bind and generate equal sized PCR products in both cases. It's because the sequence composition or configuration is same in all. Now regarding the internal primers, as I said, they are allele specific. So 
one particular inner primer will bind to a specific DNA sequence and will not bind to other. So this means, let's say in case of individual X, the internal forward primer is not going to bind. Why? It's because the nucleotide sequence at the 3' end of the primer is not matching with the DNA sequence. But the same internal forward primer will amplify in case of individual Y. It's because here the primer has got perfect complementarity with the DNA sequence. So this would generate mutant allele specific amplicons in conjunction with outer reverse primer. Similarly, internal reverse primer specific for the individual X wild type allele anneals and produces the amplicon in combination with outer forward primer. But this will not generate any PCR product in case of individual Y. Now you have to keep one thing in mind that the primers are designed in such a way that they must produce the fragments of varying length so that they can be differentiated easily on the gel. Basically this is done by selecting the SNP site in a manner that it does not come exactly in the center or in other words it should be eccentric that is must be closer to one ends of the DNA. That's all. Thanks for watching.